everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we are going to talk about eyes painting eyes on miniatures now this tutorial is specifically going to be about doing small basically non detailed eyes on your 28 millimeter miniatures so I'm assuming that you have a miniature something like this so this is our little beast man here and you can see that the amount of space we have for his eyeballs is not huge, right? Like, they're pretty tiny. Um, and so this is going to be super fun to capture on camera. Um, <clears throat> now, this is an old beast man I just had sitting around. Um, he happened to be primed white, which actually I think is going to work better because it'll show the contrast. So let's talk about the first things first. Eyes are one of the things that you can really take to an extremely high level. Now, if you're looking to do something like you know super pro at even this scale there are ways to get in there and add more color to it we're, we're not going to cover that today okay today we're going to talk about how can i get a good looking eyeball on a 28 millimeter miniature i'm not trying to win you know a slayer sword here okay um so what are our steps well first you prime your mini of course now i would still normally recommend zenithal i happen to have this guy all primed in white just because and it'll probably be better for this case the next thing that I do is we use our old friend here, our Vallejo Model Wash Dark Gray, because again, I love how this applies and dries, but you could use like a Nuln Oil or something, it would be fine. And what I did is I just laid that right up here into the eye socket. Now, you definitely want to do this over like a Zenithal or a white, because you can see what happened here. By the way, this is like a miniature size one brush. This is quite small, so you can see how tiny this is. Um, you can see how it collected down in the recesses and created a dark outline. Um, I tend to like this method better than drawing black across the eye. A lot of the techniques you'll see, the, the, the concept is you draw black across the eye and then you draw white over top of it, and that's fine. But I tend to like, th the way I prefer to do it is to go in and before I paint the rest of the face to just use some kind of black wash like that one and coat this area. And then that's gonna shade everything appropriately. Like it'll give me, it'll create my shadows. Now when I lay in my flesh, I'm gonna cover part of these shadows, but it'll still act as sort of a, a darkening agent, a shadow agent. Um, it also helps me correct any zenithal, you know, sort of mistakes or overspray in my normal zenithal highlighting scheme, okay? So easy, easy peasy, right? You, you literally just take some wash, you drop it in there, you let it dry. Um, now, the next thing I want to talk about with eyes is how do we get the eyeball in there? And the first thing we're not going to do is go straight to white. This dead white. Nope. Bad. Put it away. Eyes aren't white. Your eyeballs are not white. Okay? Um, I know we say the whites of your eyes, but eyes are only white in the very generic sense of the term. What we're going to go to instead is something like this. This is my light sand. You know, I'm a big fan of this color. I've used it a lot of times. You can use any off-white that you happen to like. Um, you want something with a good flow. You're going to want, like, getting the, your paint consistency right when doing eyeballs is going to be the biggest challenge. It's the thing you have to work with. I can't give you the secret. You're just going to have to play with it. If it's too thick, it's not going to go on right. It's going to look it's going to mess up your, your recesses. If it's too thin, it's going to run and get down in the recesses. So you got to really nail your consistency. And I'm sorry I don't have a better answer for you. I would just tell you that it's important and pay attention to consistency of your paint. Okay? All right. So what we're going to do next is we're literally just going to lay that. That's how big my finger is, by the way, compared to, him, to this eyeball. So um, we're just going to lay some of that white right up in there. Now I'm going to do my best my best to do this on camera, but I want you to understand that this is going to be very tricky to do on camera. So if this doesn't come out perfect, it's not because of a lack of the technique, it's because of a lack of my ability to do it on camera. But I will try. Okay, so we put a little of, the, of our light sand on our palette. Now we're going to get a pretty fine brush for this. So in this case, I, I, I normally t say always use a bigger brush. You can always use a bigger brush. This is the one time I'm going to go to something this small. So this right here is a, a double zero, okay? And you can see that that has a pretty good fine point, okay? 
And I'm gonna water up my paint a little. That's also gonna be important. I, that my little model color is way too thick normally. But again, it's about finding that right consistency. And the way we're gonna test is as usual, we're gonna use the back of our thumb and we wanna be able to draw it and get a nice line. If we get a spotty line, or if it doesn't go on smooth, it's not, it's too thick. If it runs down into the cracks of your thumb, it's too thin, okay? On our palette, by the way, you can't see it because I'm doing it off camera, but I'm working my brush like that, I'm kind of twisting it, pulling the paint up toward the end. Okay, all right. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and just hit, oops, sorry. I'm gonna just hit the eyeball itself. I didn't talk because I had to hold my breath during that. <laughs> so there we go. Let's see if we can get him really, really focused in on camera there. So there you go. Now we got a nice off-white eyeball. The advantage to doing this first is that if you happen to get a little down on like the ridge beneath the eye, that's okay. It doesn't matter because you're going to paint over that later. You're just going to need to be careful when you paint your face. If you want to do this afterward, you can do it after painting the flesh as well, by the way, following the same process. You can paint the whole flesh of the face. If you don't want to be careful when you're doing the flesh on your face, you can do all the flesh, lay in your black wash, and then go in and do the eye. You just, ha you just might have to correct a little bit around the eye later. Whichever way you find the easiest for you is the right answer. Okay, I've seen it recommended both ways. I do it both ways sometimes, because sometimes I forget, I'm not gonna lie. It's fine, okay? So if you do all the flesh first, then go back in with your wash, then lay down your white, that's fine. Okay, so now we've got some eyes in there. We can see the white against the dark. Our next step is going to be to put in an eyeball. Um, so for this, same rules are gonna apply, okay? Um, now, if you want to get particularly tricky, I'll talk about a choice you can make at this point. Depending on how comfortable you are with your brush control, you can grab a color, brown, blue, whatever. You can dot it like, you can dot it with that. If you're, then you can go in and do a black dot in the center, okay? I'm gonna do that, you don't have to do that. If you don't, want to actually be that careful with it, you can just go straight to the black dot. At this scale, and from the distance of an average trooper, it's not gonna be visible. So it's about how much you wanna do. I'm gonna show you the, the, the first method, just so you can see it. Again, you could go straight to the black dot, okay? Okay. So, um, I wanna give this guy uh, a brown eye, cause he's, he's gonna be a beast man. So we're gonna get out some rust, something fairly rich in brown tone. Now this I won't thin because it's already quite thin paint. I've also seen some people with the line method where you draw it vertically down there. I'm not as big of a fan of the line method. If you find you really have a problem with brush control, you can do it, but I don't generally like the line method because it creates other sort of issues with your recesses. Okay, so again, we test. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just dot both the eyes. So again, you're not gonna hear me talk for a second while I lean way in and do this. You'll notice, by the way, oh, let me talk about one other thing. Both of my arms are resting on my desk. My wrists are locked. My hands are locked around this thing. Everything about me is very stable right now. The only thing I can move at this point, everything else is locked, is this right here, my fingers that are doing the brush, okay? Very important. Don't try to hold the mini up. Make it very stable. Okay. 
Okay. So now we've got some brown dots in there. Not great on the left side. I kind of missed a little bit. That's going to happen. It's okay. I can't use like my super light when I have the when I'm recording, so. But you can see the brown dot in there. Like I said, if you don't want to do this step, you don't have to. You also want to aim more towards the center. Like your eye should not be the eye should be more toward the center toward the nose. Your eyes aren't actually equidistant spread apart. Like if you were going to balance them evenly on the head, they'd probably occur here and here, but that's too far apart. So you're going to move them in. So mostly both your eyeballs need to come in this direction. Okay. All right. So now we're going to get out our black. And for this, yes, I'm just going to use straight black. You can use, if you have a very dark, like, German gray type of color, that's also fine. And I'm just going to use black to make it very stark and stand out. So same process. We're going to get our paint in there. We're going to roll our brush in the palette to get a nice fine point. We're going to test on the back of our thumb. Okay, we don't want to let the paint dry at all. We want to get right on in there. And then once again, we're going to just try to dot the center. If we put in the other color, we're just going to try to dot the center. Otherwise, we're just going to try to place our dot. Okay. And there we go. And just like that, we have eyeballs. Okay, that's basically all there is to it. Between the wash, that's what cuts the outlines of your eye. So that gives you that impression, right? Without that wash, first, you don't have the ridge lines around the eye that give it that realistic tone. If you think about your eye, your eye has dark shadows around it, around the eyeball. This is what creates that. Then we do our off-white. We're just moving horizontally across the eyeball like that. You don't have to try to hit it all at once. You can just be very careful, just light, light, light touches. Okay. Then if you want to, optionally, you could take a color, you place a dot, place a dot, then you go into your black, place a dot as, as close to the center of your previous color as you can. Okay. So there you go. I think that guy looks pretty nice. He looks, he looks very angry. Um, drawing the eyes more toward the center, if you can, the pupil should be more toward the nose. So your the left eye should be going this direction, the right eye should be coming this direction. That makes it look more like they're looking straight ahead. It focuses sort of the, you can see how it focuses his look forward. Okay, there you go. It's really that easy. That's your eyeballs. Uh, I hope that was helpful for you. We'll do another tutorial at some point in time about doing very complex eyes, uh, especially when it comes to your larger miniatures where you've got more eye space to work with either things that are in 54 millimeter or your big monsters or something that have like big eyeball space. But for your regular infantry guys or something like this, this will get you some eyes going, can really make the model pop and stand out. And it's a very simple process, honestly. Okay, so there you go. Hope that helps. As always, give it a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more hobby cheating in the future. And we'll see you next time.